Hi FlossTube, I'm Jennifer, this is Stitching with the Waves, and I'm going to talk to you about cross stitch and quilting and some petty point today. So welcome, I wanted to start off by first saying thank you so, so much for all of your wonderful comments. Last video um, when I showed my petty point carpet, that's the first carpet I had finished and you all just raved over it and it made me so happy. I love it so much and I'm so glad that you guys do too. Uh, I just started a second carpet, so I'll show you that a little bit later in the video. And I'll keep showing more Petty Point. I had a few people in the comments also say um, they want to try Petty Point or they checked out the um, Petty Pointers groups on groups.io, maybe ordered some supplies. So I would love, love, love to see any projects that you guys stitch. So if you're on social media and you post, if you stitch Petty Point and you post something, please, please, please tag me. I want to see it. I would love to find more Petty Pointers that are on Instagram or in some of the Facebook groups. Um, and be able to, to check that out and, and share that with you. Um, so let's move on. My, I didn't do, oh, I was gonna do some tutorial videos that I mentioned um, about dyeing fabric and about how I um, mount my silk gauze for the petty point stitching. I didn't get to do any of those because the house is falling apart, you guys. All of a sudden, in the last two weeks, let's see, the dryer broke, the freezer broke, the garage doors broke, and we got a notice from the water company saying that we have High water usage so we have a leak somewhere. So I have spent my spare minutes hiring repairmen and putting food coloring in toilets trying to find if one's leaking and you know checking faucets and all of that stuff so it's been a crazy two weeks but I hope like we have lots of repairs booked now so hopefully uh, things will calm down and I can get those recorded soon. Um, at the, my last video I recorded the beginning of March and I was mainly focusing on my cells so I'm going to talk about my cells first today. Um, I had three sows and they all had parts release at either the end of February or the beginning of March. So I was just focused on getting all those caught up. Two of them had the last part release, so they're now finishes. And then the third one I have uh, all caught up and up to date, ready, you know, waiting for the next part to release, which is good because I have another sow starting next week. So let's jump in and talk about those. I didn't do any FFOing or anything um, in the last two weeks. That just didn't happen. So the first one that is a finish is uh, Le Saison 2021, the Springtime Sal. Get my face out there so it focuses. Um, this is from the blog Flannery au Fil de Saison, um, and I have that linked in the description box below. So the Springtime, there's one for each of the seasons, and the Summer version is one that is starting next week. So Spring finished up, and get my wipes. This is my version of it. I totally changed up all the colors to fit kind of the colors that I like to decorate with in the spring. So there it is. I had, I think last time, all I had to do was fill in the last two motifs, which is uh, the man and woman who are dancing there. So I'll try to do a little pan up for you so you can see all the different motifs. I love how this one turned out. And I have um, a pedestal frame that I want to put this on, but I haven't dug it out of my stash yet to see if this actually fits on it. So I'm hoping that that will fit and I can get this FFO'd up pretty quickly. I did look for some fabric at Joann's last week. I didn't find anything there. I just went to the small Joann's that's in my neighborhood right here. Um, it's a very, very tiny store and I didn't find anything. So I'm gonna look through my stash and hopefully find something that, that will work. Um, for this piece, otherwise I'll have to try and get out. There's a about 30 minutes away, a really large Joann's. But I'm super hopeful. So as I was driving through town um, the other day, about a mile away from the Joann's we currently have, the tiny one, it's in a strip mall, and then about a mile away there's another strip mall, and there's a big coming soon sign from Joann's outside of that second strip mall. So I'm thinking, it says uh, summer 2021. That's um, so what the sign says. So I'm thinking they're closing the small little tiny shop and hopefully moving to a bigger a store with a bigger footprint in the other strip mall a mile down the road. Um, I don't know, I haven't seen any confirmation of that, but that's my guess based on that sign going up. I'm really, really hoping it's bigger and larger um, because our, our store is so tiny. Um, the aisles are super crowded and they just don't have very much. Um, they, have, they have almost all the departments. They don't have any framing or picture frames but they have pretty much all the other departments that they have at the larger Joann's, you know, a couple of towns over. 
but they just don't have very much in all of the departments. They only have a very small selection in every department since they still have everything and it's such a small store. So I'm hopeful that we're gonna expand and get a big one. Now the benefit of the old location it is Joann's, next door is Office Depot, and then next door to that is a Michael's. So you can park in one parking spot in the shopping center and walk easily to both stores because it never fails. Whichever one I go in looking for DMC, the first store does not have the DMC I need. <laughs> but if I walk to the other store next door, they have it. So now it's gonna be get in the car and drive a mile down the road to go to the other one. But still, if, if it has more stuff and is bigger, I would love that. I would love to have a bigger fabric selection close to home. So. That is the springtime. Hopefully next time you'll see that FFO. Next up is a Christmas sow, and this is called Un Noël de Bordures. And it is designed, it was on a Facebook group, and the designer was, um, there go, oh, there's the whole thing, Fabienne Kuhleman. And she has a company, uh, she's a French designer and thread dyer. She has a company called Un Petit Fill, a little thread and she dyes her own uh, over-dyed hand-dyed threads. So she designed this piece and the called for colors were, were her threads. Um, since they were coming from France, I did not order them because this was started back uh, in the fall or summer and just trying to get, you know, things shipped internationally last year did not seem like the, the best plan in order to be able to start on time. So I just picked fabric and floss from my stash that I already had. And I used, um, instead of the yellow color that she charted, I used a gold chronic blending fil filament that I already had in my stash. And I did start running out of that. I was on the third part of four when I realized I may not have enough blending filament to finish the piece if I, if I did all the yellow um, as charted. So I ended up, um, the great part about a Facebook group is that you get to see everybody else's changes that they made to it and, and little modifications. And so I ended up switching up a few things. Um, where's that star? Let me look on here first, oh, yeah, down here in the corner. So this star down here in the bottom corner, I do not have enough hands for this. Okay, there we go. That star down there in the bottom corner. Um, can you see the gold? Let me turn it a little bit. I just did the gold in the corners. I saw somebody on the Facebook group stitch their star in white and then just, um, Put the gold in the corners and so i did that um because these stars up here i did early on and so i did them entirely in the gold um but i knew i didn't have enough i you know, probably wouldn't have enough gold to do that whole star down there so i just kind of for the last two parts judiciously chose where i would put put the gold colors i can't see if i'm on the screen here guys hard to figure out if I'm showing you all the parts or not. Hopefully that worked. Hopefully you saw them all up close. Um, so again, I have a picture frame I need to take out of my stash that I'm hoping to fit FFO this on. Hopefully, I haven't checked yet to see if it will fit. I think it will, looking at it. I don't know, it might be a little bit too big, but hopefully it'll fit and I can also get this one FFO'd. I, had it, I didn't look for any more Christmas fabric. I feel like I have enough Christmas fabric in my stash that I don't need to be buying anymore. So hopefully I um, can make that one work and get that FFO'd as well. All right, so now my sal that is still a whip that is Sense and Sensibility from uh, Stitching Book Club by Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts. And this is part two of three parts completed. There we go. Oops, I've been forgetting to tell you guys about fabric again but this one is a 40 count that I dyed myself. Um, Kristen had made some kits and she used the Evening Blue Rit dye. So I also used that and it came out just a little brighter than I felt really went with my decor and stuff. So I added a little bit of taupe Rit dye to go along with the Evening Blue and I feel like that toned it down just a tiny bit, which is great. All right, so that's it for Sal's. Like I said, the summer version of Le Saison is coming out next week, so you'll be able to see the start next time for that one. So let's move on to my monthly goals, the pieces I'm working on um, this year that are larger pieces, and so I've set a goal for what I wanna accomplish each month on them. And I am, I've got just a few. I have most of the monthly goals finished up already for this month, which is great. 
Um, first one is from Crochetta Gogo. It's called Calendario del Evento 2020. And there it is. I'm stitching each of the days as an individual little piece so I can use this as an advent calendar that we can change out. And I picked up this one. It's called Christmas Green Chic Six Decora Nozoni. Six decorations. And it's just these six little pillows. And there's the, the title of it, if you're looking for it. Um, I picked this up on Etsy. And I had seen it, uh, Heather from White House Stitchery. She's uh, Crafty Cottage Stitches with her mom on Floss Tube. She had seen my advent calendar when I had first bought that pattern. And she ended up buying this one because it's just six of them rather than, than 24. And there are a few on here that I really love. And then there are a few on the advent calendar that I felt like I could change out. Um, for example, like the Santa Claus hat here. It's a lot of red, you guys. Can you see it very well? It's right there. It's just a Santa Claus hat. There's already this uh, crescent moon shaped Santa Claus. And down here, there's another full Santa Claus. So I just felt like that's a lot of red stitching and it's just, it's, it's, not, very, it's not as colorful as the other individual pieces. Um, and I didn't feel like, you know, two Santas and a Santa hat were necessary. And some of these I really love, like the little mittens are super cute. The, um, the bell, where's the bell? It's so hard to see backwards on the screen. Here we go, the bell is over here. Um, I have several of my grandmother's Sterling Silver Wallace the Christmas bells that hang on the tree, the ornaments that hang on the tree. She had one from every year and then when she passed away, I took um, like my birth year and, and things like that, you know, meaningful meaningful years to me. So I you know, would like to stitch the bell because that has some personal meaning. Um, the ice skate as well, I think is super cute. So some of these I'm gonna switch out. Um, they're the same stitch size, so it's super easy. And then I just take the charted number from here and put it on this piece instead. So I did that for this month, which was number eight. I'm not doing them in order. I, I don't know what order I'm going in. I'm just kind of randomly jumping around a bit, but I did the little mittens. So next up is 101 Alphabet, one of my favorites. This is from Rosewood Manor, and I am still, it's a huge piece, still working away at this one. My goal for this one is one day a week, and I'm stitching this one on 40 count beach brew from R&R, &R, one over one. So I have just a little bit more to go to finish the page. Hopefully I'll be able to do that next time. This past time, I think I was here stitching this aqua flower, so I finished that motif coming down. I finished the this is kind of lattice-ish motif next to it, the letter Z, and now I'm in the middle of, of this motif here. So, that was just slow progress, baby steps, get that one done. All right, next up is door stopping, which is a pattern, some designs by Nan Vanderstorm, and it's a Facebook group um, called Hidemizashi, which is a Japanese tag, door stopping, and something else on Facebook. I have it linked in the description box below so you can find it. So I've been just doing one of these darning patterns a week. And this one here with kind of the little leaves is the one that I did um, this month. And I think I just said one per week. I'm doing one per month, not one per week. But there we go, that's my most current one. And I'm just, I picked uh, kind of my favorite Shades of Blue family from DMC, and um, I'm just kind of cycling through some of them. So I get different colors throughout it, so it's not just one solid color. Okay, and I just store that rolled up with one of those little wonder clips on the end so it doesn't come unrolled. There's that one. Next up is Quaker Ball, and this is one that uh, the designer is Tatiana Plavinskaya, she's I believe from Belarus, and the pattern is not widely available. I was able to uh, get in touch with her on the internet and um, she didn't have any way to sell me the pattern, but she was very kind and, and sent me the, the PDF. So um, there are other Quaker Balls out there if you're interested. You can just search for Quaker Ball pattern and there are tons of different Quaker Ball patterns out there that you can choose from. So this is what I am working on, and I uh, did another 
one of the, let me get that folded a little better to show you. I did another one of the hexagons. It's made up of squares, hexagons, and octagons. So I'm just doing, I did two squares the first month, an octagon the next month, and then, or sorry, a hexagon the second month, and another hexagon the third month. So there is that one up close. And this is all sat satin stitching, so the counting is a little bit different. Every time I switch over to this one, um, from a you know traditional cross stitch over two piece, it always takes my brain a while, a while to get the counting right and not mess it up. So I don't know, I might end up trying to stitch this one as more of a focus piece just because of that. Because I think if I stitched it several days in a row, my brain would better be able to get in 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 the zone with the how the counting works and how the sti stitching works with all the satin stitches and that way it, it would go faster I think I would like I have a lot of times where I have to pull it back out and if you with the variegated thread if you pull it out you gotta be really careful because you want to be able to reuse that otherwise the variegation gets kind of weird looking so oh, this one's a challenge <laughs> I love it but it's a challenge next up is Encore is an advent calendar from Uncroy Le Tom's Dante. And there's the designer. The pattern number is 1612. She doesn't um, name them, they're just numbered. And she has a, a shop online where you can purchase them. She does not have PDFs. I have it linked in the description box below. So you can check it out there if you want to. And I am just stitching on this one day per month. And it is on a 40 count linen that I dyed myself using taupe, pearl gray, and Kelly green writ dye. So I started off with the center start and worked my way up. And the past several times I've picked it up, I've just been working on the roof up there because it is just kind of a beast. I did change up the colors a lot because I had a bunch of thread left over from Kringles um, by Little House Needleworks that I stitched last year. And so I decided to use those same colors in this pattern. So there's just a lot of the roof that I've been working on. All right, this is my last monthly piece that I've worked on so far this month, and it is a new start. It is the Persian carpet from Natalia's Fine Needlework, and she's at dollhouseminiatures.com, and I believe this pattern, it's a free pattern, and it, she has it posted several places, and I believe you can go to dollhouseminiatures.com and that she has it posted on her website there where she has her shop. So the the burgundy color outwards is is matting and framing. So it's it ends with this this green border in here. And I'm trying stitching this from the center medallion out. So here we go. Yeah. I I marked the frame that I made which side is the top um, because it's gonna be pretty easy. It's just all you know symmetrical so it's gonna be pretty easy for me to get confused <laughs> about where um, which side is up so I marked that to make sure but there we go that's about a day's progress working on it and I picked all my own colors for it um, I think I didn't ha it was all charted in DMC and there are quite a lot of places where there's fairly large blocks of color and so I wanted to use some variegated threads to try and give it more of that older worn carpet look where you know some of the color starts to fade in various areas um i believe the effect is called a brash and so um that was kind of my goal was to see if i could use some over dyed threads to kind of get that that shading in it so i'm loving that one so far i don't want to put it down um, my goal is one day per month on on that project as well and i don't want to put it down so i don't think i will i think i'll just keep going with it um, and one more cross stitch project to show you, and that is, um, I don't have a picture of the pattern, it's a freebie, it's from the Comtesse de Pointe de Croix, and I will see, I downloaded it a few years ago, but I think she still has all of hers up, so I'll try and find it and link it in the description box. Um, it's just, it's four little Easter eggs. I have like one and a partial one stitched there. I'm doing this as a candle wrap, so it's on this, um, it's about 40 count ribbon that I found at Michael's a while ago. I think they still have it in the uh, wedding ribbon area. They have like the, those wedding ribbons that are, are separate from all the other ribbon. And it's just got, already got a lace edge on it, so it makes it really easy um, to FFO. 
I don't have to do anything with the edges. So I'm doing this, I tried stitching it over two um, with one strand of thread since it's about 40 count. And it was just, the eggs are pretty tiny on here, but when I did over two, they fill up pretty much the entire thing and it just looked squished and I didn't really like it. So I decided to switch it up. So I'm using two strands of thread and I'm doing one over one, but I'm only doing 10 stitches. I tried, I tested doing a full cross using one strand, but it's just too much on 40 count. Um, it just, it's too crowded and bulky and doesn't look good. So I switched and I'm doing two threads and using a 10 stitch instead. And I really, I love, it's coming out super delicate and dainty and I really love that. So hopefully I can have that one finished up pretty quickly, but like I said, I've gotten very distracted by that Persian rug and don't wanna put that down. So that covers all my cross stitch that I have worked on. I also finished up my quilt that I had shown you last time. I think I'd shown you the entire thing um, I won't unfold it all the way this time. This is the pattern of Disappearing Nine Patch, and the fabric is Tranquility by Jerry Robinson for Riley Blake Designs. So last time I didn't have the binding on. So let me see if I can get just one, one layer. There you go. So that's the binding. Uh, it's just a, a blue floral fabric. I've got that on there now. And it's completely done. It's finished. And my daughter hasn't drawn it off to her bed yet. Um, it has been on the sofa. I've been using it. It's been fantastic. So love that one. Totally finished. That was quilt number four, I think, that I made. Yeah, quilt number four. So I um, decided to treat myself. I had a big milestone birthday this year, but um, earlier in 2021, and my original plan had been to take a trip with my family, and we pretty much decided that's not going to happen. We were going to you know, do an international trip and that's just not gonna happen. So I thought about postponing it. Um, we have other trips we wanna take too. And I just, it's like, I wanna celebrate that birthday this year. I don't wanna wait. I, you know, had gotten some money for my birthday um, as a gift and I hadn't really figured out what I wanted to do with it or spend it on. I was kind of saving it to spend on the trip and now we're not gonna do that trip. So um, I decided to get a sewing machine, a real like actual quilting machine. Um, so I'm super happy with that decision. It's not going to be here until the end of the month, but I just, you know, I've been doing all of my quilting on my old machine, which is, it's about 22, 23 years old, I think. And it is great for piecing the tops, but it does not do well at all with the actual quilt sandwiching. So it's just too, the material's too thick when you get the whole sandwich put together and you're trying to stick it through. I get a lot of like bowing of the seams. So I think an actual quilting machine is gonna be exactly what I need. And I'm super excited by it. Um, so happy birthday to me. Um, I'm just super thankful that I'm able to do that and get that and, and have um, all the tools to really make quilting fun so that it's not such a challenge. So one of the things I wanted to do I had some fabrics that I had gotten from Joann's that were uh, plaids, like red, white, and blue plaids. And I wanted to get a top piece so that as soon as I get my new machine, I could try it out for the quilting on the sandwich part. I don't have to like wait to get a whole top piece. So I decided to make a patriotic table runner out of that fabric from Joann's. So I did, so I can show you here. I just did four pinwheels. Um, I used this was also an experiment for the half square triangle paper um, that's sold at Fat Quarter Shop and helps you make really perfect half square triangles right there. So just one of those blocks like that is a half square triangle. And it helps you get these made really, really perfectly so that they all go together really perfectly. Um, my daughter's next quilt that I am making for her will be entirely half square triangles all put together. So I just wanted to figure out how the paper worked and make sure um, yeah, I thought that this would be a good small test of how to use it and, and make sure I knew what I was doing with it. Um, so this is pretty much ready to go. It's a little bit too narrow, so I'm gonna add some, some white border to the edge um, just to, to make it a little bit wider so that it will go on um, this sideboard that I have right behind me here. Um, so this is, just needs to get the borders at it. And then this will be ready to sandwich together on the new machine and see how that goes. I also um, think it'll be a little bit easier to start with a small table topper to learn how to use the machine 
um, and then I'll do my daughter's big quilt later. So I'll kind of know the machine before I'm trying to wrangle this giant quilt through it. Um, so I'm really, really happy about that. So um, what else, what else? My haul this time is just the plastics from Fat Quarter Shop. This is called Moss Green. We have all these pretty green colors. Tomatillo, Wasabi, that one. Olive Branch, right here. Secret Garden, right there. Nature Trail, and Lemongrass. So there we go, all beautiful mossy green colors. I don't think I have any other haul and my goals for the month, plans coming up. I am, I have two more pieces um, that have monthly goals and that is my mother's tree fan samplers for my daughters. So uh, I'm, I need to finish charting the pattern for my second daughter. I have one done, but I need to get the other one done and my computer's all fixed now. I have PC stitch back, so that's good. So I'll be getting that. I'm about halfway done with charting up her pattern. So I'm gonna get that all finished and I wanna get the fabric cut out, everything all set up, get them both in bags, get it all just ready to go and set up. So that's a goal there. Um, I also wanna finish those little Easter egg candle wraps and get that done as soon as I can. I really need to FFO some projects in March as well. Um, I'm starting to get a big pile again of things that need to be FFO'd and my goal for 2021 is to FFO more things than I finish and I am not there right now. <laughs> so I need to work on getting some more things FFO'd. And then I do have the sale coming up for the summer version of La Saison. So I need to get, um, see if I'm, what fabric I'm gonna use. Do I have something in my stash or do I need to dye something? Um, so I need to pull the floss out for that and kind of do a floss toss and see what I've got going on. And then I have some other projects that need fabric dyed for them so that when I'm ready to start them, I'll have that all ready to go. So I'm hoping that I can get a fabric dyeing tutorial going, filmed for you while I'm trying to get all those fabrics set up. And what other plans do I have? Quilting some stuff. I want to. I want to try and do. I want to try and make some project bags. I have a ton of different sewing projects that I want to do. It's a little bit hard to sew. Um, I have limited time because the sewing machine's noisy, and I've got you know everybody at home trying to do school and all that. And it's such an open floor plan, and I don't have a room that I can go in where I can close the door and sew. So I, I have to do it. Um, not during school hours and not when I'm trying to help with homework and when I'm trying to take kids to sports and all that stuff. So a little limited on that. I did beg, beg, beg my daughter to wear her headphones today during class, which she did. So hopefully the background noise situation in this video is very minimal. Um, she was, she hates wearing the headphones. They're not comfortable. And so she prefers to, you know, just have the, the volume coming straight out of the computer, but then it's really distracting on my videos when she's doing that. So I have to go give her a huge thank you for wearing the headphones today for me. Um, I think that's pretty much it. So thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you here again next time. Bye.